Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and today's gonna to be reviewing the original R35 GTR. This is actually a really clean example with pretty low miles, about 30,000 miles. Before we get in this video, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to the Lurch Miller Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in Sandy, Utah for giving me some time with this GTR. I'll include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. I'll also include a link to my car buying guide. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a twin turbo 3.8 liter V6 that goes through a six speed dual clutch. It produces 480 horsepower and then 430 pound feet of torque. The new GTR produces a bit more, but I mean, this was crazy back in the day. Before I move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Now, when it comes to style, I think the GTR has actually aged pretty darn well. I mean, first off with the hood design and little knock ducks I think that's really cool. The headlight design as well. I mean, certain elements in it, you can tell that it's a little bit of an older car, but I mean, overall, when you just look at this at a glance, I mean, I think it's a pretty cool looking car. And what has definitely aged well, in my opinion, is the wheel design, because you just have this simple, six spoke design you also have the bronze on the brembo brakes which just look really sharp but yeah i mean i think that also looks great on a lot of modern cars and then you got the famous little vent there which is cool to see and then here's your side profile again it's just a good looking car and then you got the spoiler there in the back which i mean <laughs> compared to what you see with a lot of people doing on their jdm cars aftermarket this is very reasonable and again, the circular taillights, obviously on the new one, they're fancier with the LEDs and everything, but these still look good to this day. Giant, giant exhaust tips as well. But yeah, I mean, again, when I see this on the road, I think it still has quite a bit of presence to this day. But what definitely doesn't have as much presence as the uh, key fob here. It's the same as we have in an Ultima. It does say GTR at the top at least, but it's funny that it's got like an Ultima key fob. And then one of the coolest parts with the GTR has always been the door handles. Just cool actuation. And this interior is actually really nice. You've got lots of nice trim throughout and this to open up the door is really nice as well. And then you can see here at the seats. Again, you gotta remember this car is 15 years old. And this is cool for the seat adjustment, it's power, but it's like twisty with this thing. It's kind of cool, heated seat control there on the seat itself. And then quickly gonna move this forward. You do have back seats in the GTR. They're kind of pointless like a lot of muscle cars where just storage. That's a good way to put it. Getting in is actually pretty easy. I mean, it's kind of like a sedan in terms of getting in and out. And then stop start button's actually down here. And look at that, starts right up. And then fully analog gauge clusters again. I think cars with these more analog gauge clusters are just gonna age much better. I mean, I think they already have, frankly, compared to the full digital, because this just always looks good. And then the color mounted paddle shifters was also kind of a cool thing with the GTR and then even like the steering wheel trim has worn really well over time and then you can see all the info there on the screen But then notice most of this is just physical controls including for the different adjustments for the suspension and traction and everything And then this had the uh, door key shift this new GTR still have this as well but the point i'm trying to make this interior is it's actually aged really well i mean really nice condition now brand new these gtrs were like 70 ish grand this one's 30,000 miles as you can see and it's still going for about 70 grand talk about resale value <laughs> talk i mean obviously inflation's a thing so technically if you bought one of these for 70 back in the day and it's still selling for 70 you lost money to inflation but still that's crazy that the car is still selling for basically what it was brand new but let's drive it Let's take my visibility before we set off. There's a hood, both the mirrors. Throw the rest of here. G2 actually has really good visibility. It's another one of the things that's really cool about this car. It's visibility. Now, I actually had one of these for a week as a tester. It was a 2021, if I remember right. And let me tell you, I went through three tanks of gas. 
I did so many launch controls, I put the car in limp mode. Again, this is a demo car, so it's like, what? It's not someone's personal vehicle, so that's why I was, you know, willing to use it a little bit. Okay, a lot of it. But yeah, it's such a fun car, and now that I've had a chance to review some of the fancier supercars, you know, Ferrari, Lamborghini, all that, I think if I were to ever get a supercar, which I won't, because it's just not my style, as cool as they are, it would be it would be a GTR because it's just it's got some practicality. It's got the you know, trunk in the back. It's got quite a bit of storage inside here with the back seats, and it's not nearly as flashy, but it's so fun to drive. Um, funny enough, this car was you know cutting edge when it was released, right, with the technology, and now it feels kind of analog, kind of old school, mechanical, dare I say. Which is really cool. It's just cool how that's transformed with the car. And then this stuff, like it's got tactile stuff with it that I think adds the cool factor. Now 2017 plus with the GTR, they made the suspension way more comfortable. This is a very firm car. Like I would say a 2017 plus, I would daily drive it. This, no. Every so often, you know, I'll be taking a trip to work, but like, Actual daily driving, it's it's uh, a little bit too firm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this into race mode. I don't wanna do the suspension because it's already rough enough. So we'll keep that in comfort setting. We'll actually pop it into the manual mode here. And this dual clutch is another cool part of it. It's It's a very mechanical feeling dual clutch the modern ones are silky smooth this is not silky smooth it's pretty darn abrasive <laughs> yes i do remember that and again the one that i had as a demo car for a week was on 21 so it had like over 500 horsepower if i remember right whereas this you've got you know sub 500. I mean, Mustang GT has more horsepower than this nowadays. <laughs> so fun. It's such a quick car. It is such a quick car. And something that's funny is, I got to put the steering wheel down a little bit so I can show you guys. Where is the... Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Actually moves the gauge a little bit weird the whole cluster moves the steering wheel anyways the uh speedometer is here at the bottom and so it, and it goes up to over 220 miles an hour it's really funny because you don't look like because the tack is so low it's like oh i'm not even moving literally it's like i'm not even moving but you are you're going pretty quick already so i i think that's kind of one of the funny parts of the gtr is how the speedometer it's like it eggs you on to go fast <laughs> such a cool car it's so quick too so so quick even again even though this is 15 years old at this point the original gtr is still an absolute monster more than enough power where you can actually enjoy it too so overall yes supercar killer at the time and still like this is such a fast car it's so much fun to drive and it you know the modern cars the modern supercars they're so refined you can daily drive them this like i said it's not it's 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 rough with the suspension not rough it's it's firm with the suspension and the transmission is not the most refined but that's what makes it exciting that's what has gives us kind of like an emotional connection so i think they did a really good job of course with the r35 and you know they've kept making it and i know some people have been critical like oh we need a new gtr and it's like the part part of the reason why it, if you don't know gtrs sell out as soon as they get to dealerships like they're always dealerships always sell out of their allocation from what i've seen and it makes sense because it's like you cannot get any other car like this on the market today you cannot get another car that's this analog supercar performance brand new right brand new there's other obviously you can get other older supercars but I mean, this is a car you can literally drive in all four seasons because it's got the all-wheel drive system. It's just so cool. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, look at reversing. It's like a manual driver trying to get into the space. 
But that's dual clutch life for you. That is what it is like. And so again, that kind of adds to the, and the steering's heavy, it's another thing to mention, that just adds to the experience of the GTR. But let me know you guys think about the original R35.